Hello, this is Haka Dabin, and I am here with SCP-3000. A fairly terrifying snake that... I'll let the document speak for itself. SCP-3000. By order of the Overseer Council, the following file describes a Class 8 Cognitohazardous Entity and is level 5 slash 3000 classified. Unauthorized access forbidden. 3000. Oh, guess we can't read it now. Just kidding. Item number. SCP-3000. Object class, Thaumiel. Alright, what? Add sex protocol. Oh. Anyway. Special containment procedures. The area containing SCP-3000 currently a region of the Bay of Bengal, roughly 300 kilometers in, in diameter. It is routinely patrolled by a Foundation naval or vessels. There are no circumstances are civilians allowed to attempt deep sea exploration or diving efforts in the quarantine area. It was believed to have contacted SP-3000 are to be contained, quarantined, and processed at Site-151. Individuals affected by the anomalous properties of SP-3000 are to be held in containment indefinitely. The Foundation of the Submarine, SP SCPF Emita, is monitoring the location of the formal section of SCP-3000, currently located within the Igongas Pond, roughly 0.7 kilometers meet the bay. The Aramida is tasked with carrying out the ASAC protocol. Staffing regulation and onboard the vessel are subject to the guidelines of that protocol. For a full description of the, the ASAC protocol, see Addendum 3002. There is currently no known cure for exposure to SCP-3000. As such, affected individuals should be contained and quarantined for further evaluation. Individual stationed aboard the SCPF Ermita are not permitted to leave these vessels except for the purpose of carrying out the necessary procedures of the ASEC protocol. Individuals who leave the vessel without proper authorization are to be considered lost. There are no circumstances should any individual interact with SCP-3000 without authorization. Description SCP-3000 is a massive, aquatic, serpentine entity, strongly resembling a giant moray eel. Gymnothorax javanicus. I'm not sure if I said that right. I need to stop, saying, I need to stop trying to say these scientific names of, of these creatures. The full length of SCP-3000 is impossible to, to determine, but it is hypothesized to be between 600 and 900 kilometers. The head of SCP-3000 measures roughly 2.5 meters in diameter, and sections of the body proper are as large as 10 meters in, in diameter. SCP-3000 is typically a sedentary creature, only moving its head in response to certain stimuli or during feeding. The majority of its body is located in and around the Iganga spine. Specifically within several cannons throughout the, the region and rarely moves at all. SV-3000 is carnivorous. Despite its sedentary nature, it is capable of moving quickly to dispatch prey. Despite its size, it's hypothesized that SV-3000 does not require sustenance to maintain its biological functions. Due to this, SV-3000's internal biology is, be, is believed to be similarly anomalous. While SV-3000 excretes a thin Layer of viscous dark gray substance, classified as Y909, see them 3002 below. Through its skin as it consumes prey, the end result of, of its digestive processes is unknown. SV-3000 is a Class 8 cognito hazardous entity. Direct observation of SV-3000 may cause severe mental alterations to viewers. Individuals who directly observe SCP-3000, as well as any individuals within an uncertain distance of SCP-3000, experience inexplicable head pain, paranoia, general fear, and panic, and memory loss or alteration. The following is a log from Site-151's historical record, written by Eugene Getz, about initial discovery of SCP-3000. Uh, 
of SCP-3000 and the effects therein. The unease was felt throughout the entire crew as we descended on that first night. Whether this was due to our uncertainty at what we would discover, or something more sinister. I would not speculate. As we continued to descend, Williams began and sweating profusely. When asked about it, he could not respond, saying that he thought he was missing something he could not deduce. As our descent continued, he began to act more and more erratically. At one point, addressing myself as Zarlene, expressing uncertainty as to the tasks he was assigned to handle. Similar feelings were expressed by other members of the crew, but Williams felt it the most. His mimetic resistance was by far low of all of us. He was a biologist, not a, me a medicist. When we finally came into contact with the entity, he began whimpering and had to be sedated. I remember him muttering the word, no, over and over again, as if in disbelief. He went silent after a while as we approached his head. And when I looked back at him, something had got on from his eyes. He did not, not even so much as blink as we made our final descent. At around 9.40 a.m., we observed the head of the entity. The unease was palpable now. Several other crew members complained of feeling hazy and of being uncertain what they were supposed to be doing. Captain and Ritter, ever the man's and man, rode all up as nitrogen and intoxication and forced him to continue approaching the entity. When we were within 50 meters, the entity turned slowly to look at us. Even now, as I recall watching this thing coil around in the darkness, I could hear I could still hear Williams barking like a mad dog in the rear of the vessel screaming and flailing, shouting about how he could see it in his head. Parkinson Harrison tried to restrain him, but he got free and smashed his face against one of the earth holes. He hit so hard he cracked the inner layer of, of glass. The damage was bad enough uh, that we had to surface. We tried to give Williams medical attention, but he was too far gone at this point. He had pulled himself against the glass, and despite the trauma, he still spoke oh, briefly with you as he lay dying. No one recorded it. We didn't think to at the time. I remember it well enough. He said, There's nothing. 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 By the time we reached the surface several hours later, Williams was dead. At the time, I didn't think much about what he had said. Just raving of a man gone mad by a devs, I figured. I didn't know any better. But even now, I could still see the eyes of the creature. I see it hanging there in the darkness, illuminated by a light I cannot source, and I feel the lingering dread that Williams must have felt that night is unmerciful, as he was overcome by whatever void that foul thing slithered out of. Discovery. SV-3000 was discovered in 1971, shortly after two Bangladeshi fishing boats and 50s fishermen were reported missing after drifting near the in coast, as the country of Bangladesh had only recently been established at the time and had been subject to significant political persecution of the on the part of Pakistan, this end of this incident received high profile media attention due to fears that it was uh, a result of foreign aggression. Local dispatch units could not locate the missing votes, fueling further media hysteria. Foundation researchers stationed in, in Calcutta, now Calcutta, oh, I don't know these, these countries, I'm sorry, drew similarities between the disappearance and another incident two years earlier. A thorough search aided by Amari Hashler revealed the location of the two boats, as well as an unknown, previously undiscovered mass below the surface of the Bay of Bengal. Further investigation by Foundation divers discovered the existence of SCP-3000. The area was quickly secured, and current containment procedures were put in place in April of 1972. The Aztec Protocol was adapted in October of 1998. Addendum 3001 Initial contact exploration log. Note the following is the transcript of audio logs taken and during an initial deep sea diver contact with SV3000. Until this point, no foundation diver had come within in 300 meters of SV3000. Divers were tasked with assessing the creature and determining the source of the thick gray fluid that had been observed floating around its head. 
Dive Team was composed of three members of MTF Orion 9, Kingfishers, led by MTF 09 Alpha. Launch point was through the airlock of the SC of the Foundation and submarine SP SCPF Sarvinsky. All divers were equipped with high pressure suits as well as front facing headlamps. Additionally, a tether was connected to MTF 09 Alpha, uh, which was then connected in a T shape out to both Bravo and Foxtrot. Begin log. Our command, we're situated in the airlock and ready to roll. Confirmed. Go ahead and sound off. Orion 9 Alpha, check. Orion 9 Bravo, check. Alright, men. We're in a position about 500 meters from the head of this creature. Make sure your tethers are on good and tight. We don't want any of you getting separated out there. What's visibility you'd like down there today, command? Stand by. About 3 meters. So it's dark as frick. Got it. Why are we so far are out? The size of this thing is hard to comprehend, and it's wrapped up, up in itself in several places. We can't get too close because there's too much body there. The entity has moved in about three weeks. At all? Affirmative. It moves slightly with the currents down, down here, but nothing more than that. If it weren't for the head movement and those observed by the first merciful team, we probably wouldn't know if it was alive or not. That's reassuring. Alright, tethers are tight. Flood the chamber. Confirmed. Rushing water is heard as the airlock chamber floods. No other sound is heard for several minutes. After some time, the sound of rushing water stops. You both good? I'm good. It's freaking cold. Hopefully we won't be out for long then. Turn on your lights, boys. Here we go. All members of the dive team exit the airlock. There is a low mechanical sound as the airlock door closes behind them. A muffled click sound is heard and the side basically activates its out floodlights. Hey, Alpha, I, uh, maybe this is a bad time to ask, but I can't remember how to turn on, on my lamp and... The lamp is on, Foxtrot. It... what? Pauses. What did you call me? Your designation, and and my any Foxtrot. I'm a Foxtrot, boss. Hang on, what are you talking about? I don't understand what you mean by designation. It's your gosh darn call sign, Bravo. What do you mean? Who's Bravo? I, uh, crap. Hang on. I was going to say something. Barry. I don't know if I was believed to have been addressing for a member of the command and team ascent SV3000, Barry Hughes, who had passed away two years prior. Are you still here? Stand by. Go for a command. If we're having a little trouble out here, I'm not sure who... We seem to have some confusion over destinations. I'm not sure where we're, where we're going. Where exactly are we? God, do you... Do you guys feel that? I've just got an awful headache. It's like noodling in my brain. Something... Dive team, be advised, as we believe you may be experiencing some detrimental cognitive effects. Keep moving forward and we'll give you more information as we receive it. Noted. Command, be advised that Foxtrot has a, a terrible headache, I think. Are we going to the right direction? We can't see out here. You are roughly 150 meters from the head of the, it's the Alpha. You should be getting a visual soon. Command, I don't see anything. Where are we? Where are we? We're almost there, Alpha. Dive team, be advised. We're picking a movement from the entity on radar. I... Barry, I don't see anything in go down here. What are we supposed to be looking... All I can see is darkness. There's a chill, foul wind and blowing. Push me towards a brink I can't see.
Shut up, shut up, shut up. Command, Bravo is unresponsive. Request immediate cessation of mission. Wait a second. On the edge of, of nothingness, inches from oblivion, there's a, there's a sickness in my mind that I know can't be cured. Beyond me is only blackness and a single pair of dark eyes. What? What are you saying? Dive team, we're going to pull you back in immediately. We have reason to believe that. Barry? Is that you? How can it be? I shoveled the dirt during your... You can hear something over there, your Alpha. Your light. Get the... Get your freaking... Silence. Only silence. My consciousness is coming undone and only and only and only. Dive team, something is moving toward you. Repeat, something is moving toward you. Prepare to return to... Ah, this is crap. I can't see. How far are we from the... It's right there! It's right there! Frick, what are you both doing? Frick! And only the eel remains. Radio silence for 20 seconds. Alpha? Radio silence for 13 seconds. Alpha, Bravo, Foxtrot, do any of you hear us? Bravo says something unintelligible. Oh, thank Frick. Bravo, you need to speak up. We can't. Shh. Radio silence for 10 seconds. Something has bound up the winch between you and us. We can't. It's opening its mouth. It's so dark. There's a... Uh... Where am I? What? Barry. How can and it be? I shoveled dirt. Oh, honey, swim away. There's only darkness. Swim. Only. There's only tension in tether attached to Avinsky. Oh, nine spot. Oxtrot's radio goes silent. There is a sound of struggle through the other two radios. Foxtrot? Foxtrot! Alpha! Bravo! Talk to me! Stay calm! What happened? It ate him! Frick, he's gone! It took him whole! He... Gosh darn, Alpha, what are you doing? Alpha? Cut the freaking and gosh darn tether, Alpha, it's pulling us in. Who? Frick. Silence, then. Ah! Total radio silence for 30 seconds. Tether attaches to Fisk is pulled free from its moorings and disappears. Alpha, bravo, do you copy? Radio silence for 5 seconds. Alpha, Bravo, do you copy? This is Bravo. I'm floating in the dark. I can see shapes through the fog, but they're hard to make out. I cut my a tether. Alpha wouldn't. I think he's gone. I don't see his light anymore. Acknowledge. We're coming to... Hang on. Just let me think for a second. Cognition. This thing doesn't work around it. Your brain can't form thought. Static. It hurts. It's like dying and... Bravo, do you have eyes on the energy? It's in my head, guys. Crawled up in there like a snake. It's something about as caustic. I can see it just in front of me. It's not doing anything. It's... It isn't moving. Just hanging there with its mouth open. I think it's finished eating. That fluid is seeping through his skin around his head. Round a meter back. Just looking at the stuff is making me like the room is spinning. I feel nauseous. My head isn't working right. <laughs> There's an abortion at the floorboards and another in the... S Wait, this is wrong. That wasn't me. Who said that? My... I'm going to collect a sample. Hang on. Bro, we're going to send out a crew to get you. Just hold on. Oh no, don't do that. Not you have to be trained to feel all, all the things I'm feeling. Otherwise, it will get it into you. Maybe it will anyway. Who knows? It feels like the end of the world down here. Fellas, 
my heart is going is really going off the charts, and I think I'm dying. Just I got a sample. I'll attach it to one of those little balloons and let it float up. You'll be able to get it later. Don't spend too much time around that stuff. It doesn't your mind. It <sighs> Bravo. I think I'm dying. I'm dying. I know I'm dying. This is it. I just want to get away from here. You know it occurs to me. <laughs> Don't say anyone else out here. It's so dark. Over the next half hour, the SCPF Trofinsky attempted to approach O9 Bravo with no success. Command continued to attempt to communicate with O9 Bravo, but Bravo grew increasingly unintelligible, before eventually going completely silent. Bravo's radio stayed active for over the next three days, and its rate of breathing could be heard until the radio ceased functioning. Now, we're in the, the interesting part. Addendum 3002, ADSEC for O-Call. Top Secret, SCP Foundation Official Documentation. This protocol dictates certain interactions with a Class 8 Cognito Hazard Entity SCP-3000, and as such, its level 5 slash 3000 classified. Preface The following procedure was developed in conjunction with researchers from Site-29 and Site-50, as well as researchers stationed at Site-151. Some sections may have been redacted to remove material above this classification. Adherence to this protocol is required for all personnel assigned to Site-151, as well as all personnel assigned to S. SCPF er, 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 Abstract. The 151 Halter Aztec Protocol has been developed and implemented to create a strategy for the management of the Y909 chemical compound secreted by SCP 3000. Protocol information The Y909 compound Originally discovered by the late Dr. Adam Halter, is a critical compound in several modern and experimental. Old amnestic compounds, specifically the following amnestics now contain a refined version of the Y9 compound. Class A, 2016 variant. Class D, 2016 variant. Class E, 2016 variant. Class X, 2017 variant. And Class XX, 2017 variant. Two redacted as a class experimental compound, foster class as experimental compound, and eclipse class experimental compound. Hang on, I'm going to take a drink. The inclusion of the Y909 compound has shown a marked increase in the stability and long-term effectiveness of the aforementioned amnestics. Overall, amnestic amnestics utilizing a Y909 break down 78% and slower than their standard counterparts in cold storage. A 50% to and 52% closer than the standard counterpart at room temperature. Additionally, individuals in measured and amnestic regimen utilizing a Y909 show a marked increase in stability, memory clearance, and significant decrease in additional side effects, such as nausea, vomiting, bowel distress, blurred vision, headaches, insomnia, heart damage, and others. Individuals treated with these amnestics express significantly fewer intrusive memories as those without 909. With some individuals exposed to experimental compounds expressing no ex intrusive memories whatsoever, even so at the 5 and 10 year marks. Due to the effectiveness of these treatments with the addition of Y909, the continued inclusion of this compound is, is essential to modern foundation amnestic application. Reliance on the compound on, on the continued use of Y909 I-909 and necessitates its collection for the foreseeable future, as a synthetic version of the compound has not yet been discovered. As such, this protocol dictates the way it is compound is collected off of SCP-3000, and the way a personnel are to interact with SCP-3000. Below is, is a brief framework of the procedure, and detailed information can be found in the full ASEC brief, which we're not going to, which I don't think we're going to be able to read. Members of uh, of MTF Epsilon Twenty, Night Fisherman, are to 
are as prepared our subject for deliverance to the feeding site. One individual will declass subject as we administer the sedative and equipped with a high pressure or diving suit. The subject is then to be tethered to an underwater rove within the aft airlock. The airlock is to be flooded and the subject is to be owed by the rove towards the feeding site. Now, upon reaching the feeding site, the rove is to disconnect its tether and return to the air edda. Throughout the stage, SCP-EF air medics are monitored SV-3000 position and adjust course if the entity begins to move away from the feeding site. Which and will provide additional instructions during this phase if necessary. The personnel on board the SCP EF Air Meta are to monitor SP 3000 during feeding sessions. During this time, no personnel are permitted to leave the Air Meta without authorization from a mission command. At a point after the total consumption of prey, SP 3000 will begin to excrete its Y909 near the formal section of its body. Specialized team Teams of deep sea divers are to exit the SCP EF Air Meta through the e aft airlock and approach SCP 3000. Collection of Y99 was a, a place during SCP 3000's digestive period, which is currently believed to be a roughly two and a half of hours after conception of prey. Teams must re return to the launch craft before the end of this air. Yeah. Of this period, I mean. During this period, the typical effects of SV-3000 are less severe, no command should continue to monitor these teams for damage to their cognition. After collection of uh, Y-909 is complete, personnel are to be are to transfer the collected materials of the to secure containers before returning to the surface. The uh, mission administrator on board the AirMeta is to monitor the substance throughout a uh, transport. <sighs> Addendum 3003 Psychological Evaluation Unknown Level 3 researcher Vin Utterman and, and Christian no more earthly attempted to exit out the air meters after airlock without diving equipment and but it was quickly restrained and the airlock cycle aborted. Despite having a CRV of 26 and having and not displayed any previous signs of depression or suicidal attempt and prior to his assignment aboard the air meta, the I'm gonna call him Venkat was interviewed by staff clinic medical psychologist Dr. Anand Minerva. I'm gonna call him Anand. To acquire a better understanding of SP3000's potential effect on a psyche. Begin log. Hi, Venkat. How are you feeling? Unwell. That's what I hear. Do you want to talk about what happened today? Venkat is silent. We don't have to if you don't want to. We can talk about something else. I'm tired and end. I understand. This assignment has been stressful on all of it. It's not. No, it isn't a stress. I've done this before. I've been on. I don't actually know if I've done this before. You have. I don't remember it. Any of it. I've been getting these out of context feelings like my body reacting to reflexes I didn't know it had. Everything is so disconnected and trying to keep it together is... I'm just tired. When did you start feeling this way? How long have we been down here? I don't remember. I don't know when. I honestly don't. I wish I could tell you more than that, but I have nothing. I looked at that place in my mind and there's something else there. There's sometimes nothing at all. What do you mean, something else? I've been having other people's dreams, Anon. I see faces I don't recognize, places I know I've never been, or maybe I have. I don't know. How can I know what is real or not when I can't trust my own mind? Maybe I can help with that, Venkat. We can go over things you think you've forgotten, and I can... Don't patronize me! I know you felt it, Anon. Your mind gets hazy. Parts of you start to, start to slip. Your memories grow faint, fade in and out until they're gone or worse, replaced. 
You see pasts that aren't yours, experiences you've never lived. You started to become other people or nobody at all. Vincat, please, I'm just trying to help. Do you even know my work before we met? Come think of it, I don't even remember how we met. I know your name, none of your psychologists, but are we friends? Are we brothers? I don't even know how I, I don't know how I know you. We work together. I know that. I still have that. But other things, they come and go. I don't know if I'm married or have children. Then God was married twice and has two sons and three daughters between the two marriages. I see. And that, that isn't the worst of it. I know this is happening to me. I know that my mind is coming apart. But there's something else in there, or, or two. Something rising out of the smoke of my small, wandering in consciousness. That eel. The eel? I don't, I don't, I don't remember my, my mother. I can hear her voice, but I can't remember her face. I can't remember how she smelled or how she, what I do remember is she told me about a gods. There is a god called Anantash Esha, a serpent, the king of serpents, said to lie beneath Vishnu in the cosmos, a six-headed snake god. Isn't that something? That's actually another name for SCP-3000. It, yes, I am familiar. Ah, uh, of course, I'm sorry, I forgot. She, I don't remember much, but I do remember that she told me about how and 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 as she has, uh, would linger past the end, gaze upon the darkness past the end of time. She said that when the light of the universe was like gone out, all that would be left is and and as she, this is a really hard hard name to say for me. I have worked my entire life for the Foundation, so much as I can recall. I have struggled to build my name and my reputation, done everything I can to leave. Something, anything, some kind of mark that says I was here, but... What is it? I believe that SCP-3000 is and Esha. I believe that this... This aberration, this treachery against cognition, is a result of us being in the presence of a god. Not just a god, but a god who exists across all time, all at once, and even beyond. Maybe, maybe some part of the nothingness beyond the edge of time is part of Anatasha as well. Maybe it acts as a conduit, some kind of... Venkat, please, we are scientists. No, let me finish. In defiance of the nothingness that comes after this, all of this, there is an Ashesha. There is a chance my memories might live on, that I might be remembered like the memories I've seen have been through me. I don't, I don't have proof of this, but when I looked into its eyes and saw that what it showed me, I was afraid. I'm merely a mediocre man, and Anand. This was a fear that I refused to acknowledge for years, a fear of irrelevance, that no one will know who I am and when I die, afraid of being forgotten, afraid of my life being meaningless, afraid of being alone, afraid of dying. <sighs> there is a terror within me that I cannot reconcile, and I won't lie to you and tell you that the mall of the Ryaga does not terrify me as well. But between this and the infinite dark I have gazed into, I have made up my mind. End log. Addendum 3004. Instant video and audio log. <sighs> After two days of containment within a secure holding cell on board the Aramida, orders were received to lift the order. The hold order on Doc, on on Venkat. In accordance to the terms of the SEC protocol, three hours after Venkat was released from his holding cell, the following incident took place. Begin log two nineteen 
in 30 seconds fast. Then you can see the, the entrance of the airman as air, after airlock. Subject is facing away from the nearest camera. 2.19.58. Pass. For example, the alarm is triggered. Exterior flood light activates. Flood light activates. SP3000 is still not visible. Command is alerted and uh, airman is engine engaged, preparing for evasive um, um, maneuvers. 2.20, 6 pa seconds pass. Venkata is startled by proximity alarm and begins to appear panicked. Subject continues to look at the, the entrance of the, to the aft airlock. Subject turns briefly towards the nearest camera and is observed to be weeping. 2.20, 21 un un seconds pass. Venkata slowly approaches aft airlock of an open store. Someone enters his airlock and primary access door is seals behind the subject. 2.20, I'm just going to stop saying how many seconds is fast. Enter our airlock and our capture is been cat staring at an exterior airlock door for full two minutes. On moving, after two minutes, subject collapse is on the ground. 2.21, all camera shutter as from every turbine spin up. SV-3000 is visible on radar, approaching SVF air meta. SV-3000 is not visible on exterior cameras. Vincat stands and approaches diving suit locker. Subject puts on a high pressure sleeve to see diving suit and then moves with swords exterior door controls. Devin engages in exterior door latch. Interior air lock camera is obscured by rushing water. 227. Secondary alignment is triggered by high airlock breach. Personnel on the bridge attempt to clear his airlock, but Advencat has already exited the airlock. Still 227. Advencat hangs in the water or behind the aft second section of the air meta, illuminated by exterior flat lights. Subject is motionless. 228. SP3000 slowly appears from out of the darkness. Vincat remains motionless. Still 228. Exterior cameras Shutter as air meta begins to reverse towards its Vincat. Rescue teams have assembled in the airlock chamber. Still 228. S-50,000 approaches its Vincat. It opens its mouth. Air meta sounds horns, but neither S-50,000 or subject appears or to notice. 229. S-50,000 moves to just about of Vincat. Subject appears to look up into the now fully extended jaw of SV3000. <sighs> Air radar begins to flash external floodlights. Airlocks open. Airlock opens. None. I was wrong. God save me. It's not. 229. SV3000 strikes to quickly consume and was been caught. Still 229. SV3000 disappears into the darkness and is no longer visible on exterior cameras. Rescue crews are recalled. Crew begins to initiate ASAC protocol. Addendum 3000. Five. No, the following are excerpts from the personal diaries of Dr. Anand Maneva. Dr. Anand has kept several journals during his assignment, has reported that it is beneficial to counteract the psychological and memory affecting properties of SCP 3000. September 23rd, 2009. I come to Barry Venkat. Not to pray is him. Psychologically speaking, having your memories affected like this is not a pleasant experience for anyone. I really shouldn't be surprised he chose to relieve himself from having his memories meddled with. After all, it's really alarming. Being briefed on its effect doesn't change the fact that I need to constantly keep tabs on all staff, myself included, and ground us to reality. I am supposed to submit a full psychological re report now, detailing what has gone wrong, why a staff member turned suicidal, and a full analysis of possible ways to prevent this from happening again in the future. So you have five inside Director Knox. 
have reviewed and some new regimen and and assigned to prevent such a travesty from having, happening again. He always was more religious than, than I am. Right at the end of his life, he was he was riffing on Anantashastra, a primordial Hindu snake god, and rambling about eternity. I'm not going to question the legitimacy of his beliefs and his claims, but this is quite the enigma, and I suppose I should consider myself of lucky that this assignment is relatively benign, compared to the previous assignments that I've had. I don't think this is a, is a mythical ear. Well, anomalous maybe, but maybe but not really that extraordinary. It's funny. I spent the last 30 years blocking out my everything my father wanted to teach me about Hinduism, and now I'm racking my brain and trying to remember anything he had to say about it. I want to say that it's because of the eel, but if I'm being honest with myself, I simply try to forget all its teachings, maybe not at the beginning, but certainly by the end. I can barely rem remember what he looked like. I do remember how angry he, he got when I couldn't remember the names of my grandparents or great uncles. He was desperate to preserve his old, his heritage, and I did everything I could to spite him. On his bed, on his deathbed, he begged me to who performed the traditional last rites after his death. He even wrote the instructions down. But I was so angry at him that I tore him up in front of him. I can't remember why. The only remembers I have of him now are how he made me feel. He spent almost 20 years trying to pass on our heritage. All I have now is anger and hatred and regret. September 30th, 2009. Site Director Knox gathered his step off this morning for a short morning. After a few brief and laconic eulogies, he took me aside and told me that Venkat's replacement role will come in a few weeks. As he kept no contact with his family, it's likely his belongings will just be disposed of and are not technically Foundation property. The Director indicated that if I want to keep a thing or two from him, I should do so now. His office was relatively unremarkable. His cushy squashed chair cushion a few office toys and a lot of marine biology books that I should probably check out someday. The only thing I took was a statue of Ganesh that stuck next to the window. Not fully sure why myself, but he's now sitting on the bookshelf next to a picture of myself, my wife, and our daughter at a lakeside terrace. It was a pretty unremarkable trip to some toy strap in Lucknow, but this really is one of our best looking pictures. We're going under again tomorrow. November 11th, 2009. All of the D-Class managed to stay put this week, which is good, other than the routine depression and memory loss from exposure to SV-3000. Everything was in order. Sometimes I'm a bit envious of them. All they know is that they're scooping gunk off some big ill. They don't know of its importance or why it's critical that they collect it and how much it helps us. Of course, one saving grace of being on the psychological division for the ESSEC project is the awareness of its potential effects. I'm aware of what's happening to my psyche. I know that I have memories that are being drained, pieces that are being lost right now. I recall images of a young man on a bicycle in front of a schoolyard gate, looking like it was from the yeah. It was the 80s. When I was in Singapore, he, he was laughing. Yet I don't know if this man and it was a friend, a lover, a son, a family friend. Who this young man and, and is? Perhaps Italian or maybe Australian? Maybe this isn't even a cherished memory at all. I looked at the Ganesh the statue again. I had a picture of my family again. It's really quite... I had a shame. I tr really forgot most anything that I've done with them. I started trying to learn more Hindu poems and songs. What how they got a copy of the Vedas? I can't memorize the lion's property. I've been reflecting on it a bit, and Kat. I told him before he passed, though. This deep, deep seated fear of mediocrity. Unable to rise out of the sea of humans that walk on the face of this earth. He's worked for the Foundation for years. And while he is one of the most well known and household names of the Foundation, He's not exactly obscure. 
You spend the Foundation's leading marine biologist and go to an expert for anything aquatic. And quite well revered. I'm actually quite surprised by his jealousy. He never was a flashy and bombastic one. I never, and I would have never guessed is that he wanted fame and recognition. Perhaps he really was afraid that he is doomed to be stuck in mediocrity. Perhaps the signs of this place remind him of something worse. Hang on. Addendum. 3006. Memorandum on SEC Free. Level 5 slash 3000. Classified. Some new assignments had questions about our work here, so I'm publishing this to clear most of them up. Feel free to contact my I office if there are any others. The SEC protocol is a method for gathering and processing the BY909 compound. It's a thick, blackish gray fluid that SCP-3000 excretes as part of its metabolism. We don't know the exact method by which it does this, but we have some ideas, and none of them are great for us. Initially, we thought it was bleeding. The first thing we sent down to look at SCP-3000 went out without to collect blood samples for analysis. When SV-3000 attacked and consumed them and began producing more of the substance, we realized that we were looking at something different entirely. It's definitely not blood. It's more into a prion slurry. It's extremely toxic, and spending too much time around this stuff causes a lot of the same effects as exposure to SV-3000 does. Paranoia, memory loss, suicidal thoughts, etc. Refining the Y909 process, what the process is called Eel jelly allows us to create amnesics more effective than any we have ever had access to in the history of this organization. Herein lies the ethical dilemma. SV2000 only creates Y909 after eating, and it only eats humans. Remember when I said we had some ideas about how it does this? Some biologists have hypothesized that SV2000 is breaking down whatever makes sapient creatures sapient, filtering it through some private skin and the rest and the rest. The, and the residual ether is what we collect. You know, you want to know something really freaked up? We take radio graphs of this thing, trying to see what's inside of it. It's full of dead human bodies. It's not digesting them at all. All it's doing something else, and the end result is Y909. When we first started using the Y909 in our M96 X programs, we tried to synthesize it. We got something close to what we were looking for. Y919, but the side effects were catastrophic. The amnestics would work, we could get people to forget events, people, well, and so on, but then they would start to forget other things too. The memory deterioration would rapidly increase until there was nothing less, and then they would die. A few of those researchers thought we might be able to figure out how to decrease the severity of those side effects, but the costs to continue those trials would have been astronomical, and the program was discontinued. It's no secret that what we're doing here is abhorrent. The ethics community, the classification community, they're all looking for ways to make this is more tolerable than what it is. But the hard truth is, if we want to continue to use Mario Amnestics, we have to have Y909. If we want to have Y909, we have to feed the class of SV3000. Otherwise, we'd have to go back to the metaphorical dark ages when we were amnesticizing people with, opio with opiates and chloroform. The good news is, we're developing ROVs that should be able to take over the job of collecting the raw material from our dive teams. This will eliminate any chance of accidental casualties like we've had in the past. And it's a good first step. For everything else, only time will tell. That's from Knox. Addendum 3007. Personal Journal of Anand. No, the following is a full old text of a page penned in the hand of uh, Anand, which was ripped out of a journal and placed on his nightstand. It is undated. I've spent a considerable amount of time on this assignment, attempting to understand the underlying effects of individuals exposed to a Class 8 agnido hazard. I've conducted numerous personnel interviews, written a great many psychological 
logical reports, but I have not been able to properly deduce what, what about this creature led at a perfectly sane man out the door of that airlock and into the maw of the eel. Earlier this week, as I was preparing my notes for another report, I accidentally knocked a picture of myself, my wife, and my daughter off, the, off my nightstand. The glass shattered and it has to hit the ground. And the picture fell out. As I cleaned it up, I noticed something written on the reverse of the image. It said, Anand, Shanti, and Padma, June 2002. But the writing was not mine, it was Venkat's. I was puzzled by this. Why would Ven and Kat have written on the back of a picture of mine? I thought little of it at the time and cleaned up the mess and went about my day. But this question stuck with me. It was a little thing easily explained in any in number of ways, but I could not seem to shake the notion of uncertainty. It was not until last night that a horrifying thought struck me, one that I could not sleep on. I accessed the Foundation Personnel Archives and realized a truth that I cannot reconcile. Shanti was Vincat's first wife. Padma was his daughter. The records are clear. The life I remember, the experiences I am certain I have had with them, are the experiences and memories of Venkat, not me. I have never been married, and I have no children. Even now I can see my wife in my mind, hear her laughter, smell her hair. But I know now that it is Venkat I see her through, not me. The horror of this realization has been replaced with a queer sort of dread. I figured out what the ill does. Something about it, some latent part of its creation, abhors cognition. It breaks down human consciousness and scares the part of us that we believe is a soul to all that remains is what we really are. Electrical signals that will someday become an inert. If even I can't remember myself, how can I expect anyone else to remember me? I have forgotten my own life. And I am strangely apathetic to this revelation. I will fade into the darkness, as thousands before me have, and thousands and after me will. No one will care as I am forgotten. I do not despair for my own sake, but for us all. You and I, we will all face obliteration. I am not important. You are not important. Vast droplets it's of irrelevancy, stretching eons in the sea of time. We may fight against it, but our enemy is inevitable. I do not think that the ill is is Anand Ashesha. I don't think it would matter if it was. What is clear to me now, as I feel myself coming apart, is not that the ill is some mythical creature or a divine serpent. Perhaps it's just a primitive creature that eluded us, holding no malice. Perhaps it really is a primordial deity harboring resent beneath the surface. The eel is not the harbinger of my demise, or humanity's doom. The eel is not the end of all things. It only shows us what the end looks like. And in spite of everything we might believe, every ideal we hold, or providence we pray for, I know this much is true for all of us. Our end will be a forgotten one. <sighs> Note, Ananda was discovered, it was later discovered unresponsive near the aft airlock. Evidence suggested that Dr. Manava had broken into the onboard storage locker and ingested a significant amount of raw Y909. Ananda was moved off of, of the er Ermita and remains at site 151 for analysis. That was grim. I don't know what to say other than. Please like the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And just remember, 
despite what Ananda might have said, you are important, you matter, and you will be remembered. Maybe not in a thousand years, but those who know you now will remember you. Please keep yourself safe out there. And I'll see you next time with SCP-4840, I think. It's a floating city one. Have a great day.